Well, good morning, SEMC family. Oh, what a great day to be together. Uh, we're standing up here, and uh, we just don't even want to kind of start things because there's just so much conversation and just the hustle and bustle of people being together. This is wonderful. So uh, we appreciate you taking some time this morning to uh, be with us here at the church or online. Um, we certainly appreciate that. So this morning, we are going to begin our service with our call to worship from Psalm 37. So if you're able, let me just invite you to stand with us as we read the Word of God and enter a time of musical worship. And Psalm 37 says this, Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and weather like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself, it tends only to evil. For the evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. In just a little while, the wicked will be no more. Though you look carefully at his place, he will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace. And at the very end of the psalm, it says this, The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Let's sing, let's sing to our God, our God of hope this morning. And actually, did everyone bring their clapping hands with them? Some say yes, some say no. But if everyone puts their hands up, Let's see all the hands up, all the hands up. Okay, so everybody has clapping hands. This is great. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're just going to start clapping together. Can we do that? All right, here we go. Awesome. Keep it going. Blessing and honor. Glory and power be unto thee. So that was my fault. <laughs> I'm one of those people that claps on one and three. So let's try that again, shall we? All right, here we go. There we go. There's a reason I don't play drums anymore. All right, here we go. You guys will find the clapping. I trust you. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the ancient of days. There we go. From every nation, all of creation, Bow before the Ancient of Days. Every tongue. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship you will be exalted, O God. And your kingdom shall not pass away, O Ancient of Days. For the ancient of days, every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory, every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship, you will be exalted, O God, and your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days.
matchless word, singing to the ancient of days. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth, singing to the ancient of days. For none can compare to your matchless word, singing to the ancient of days. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory every knee shall bow at your throne in worship you will be exalted O oh god and your kingdom shall not pass away O oh, ancient of days O oh, ancient of Now we can all clap. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me everyone needs forgiveness the kindness of a savior the hope of nations savior he can move the mountains my god is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave find me all my fears and failures fill my life again I give my life to follow everything I believe in now I surrender We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Shine your light. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Shine your light in, let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Forever, author of salvation. Our God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Forever, author of 
of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Amen. You can be seated. Well, it's good. To, uh, it's good to be together, and uh, it'll be even better when my microphone is on my ear. There you go. It's good to be together uh, today. I had a uh, I had a mask uh, confusion between my glasses and my microphone. It just got all tangled up in there, and I couldn't get it out. And so there you go. That's life with me. Uh, hopefully, life with you is a lot smoother than life with me uh, right at the moment, that's for sure. And it's good to be joining together, uh, united by our faith in Jesus Christ. And so, just want to uh, just outline a couple things as we go through this morning, what's going to happen, where the service will, our service will happen as normal, but at the conclusion of the service, uh, we are going to just do a quick reset, and then we're going to um, be presenting the uh, the items that will be voted on through our ballots, both email and paper ballots, over the course of the next week for our annual meeting purposes. And so everybody's welcome to stay for that, and so we're going to try to incorporate that within the same time frame as we would normally be here. And, uh, and then that recorded video will be sent out with the ballots to our active members via email. And then paper ballots will be here in the office through the week, Tuesday to Thursday, and then again next Sunday morning. And then we'll tabulate them Sunday next Sunday after the service, and, uh, and then uh, report on that following that. So hopefully that makes sense to you, but we'll remind you of that again uh, right, at, right at the end. So things are normal for now, and then we'll, we'll move forward with that. But as you come to next Sunday, just want to remind you that uh, next Sunday is our focus is on with NeighborLink, uh, and NeighborLink is a ministry in our city that um, addresses emergency needs for people in our community on behalf of our churches. And so we have a food drive next Sunday, uh, February 27th. And so when you come, if you could bring non-perishable uh, food items in, that would be wonderful uh, if you could do that. Um, and as we just take some time to pray, uh, just before we do that, I want to also ask you to be praying specifically for Cheryl Tidy, as uh, she has a follow-up with her uh, doctor this Tuesday, right, Bobby? Yeah, Tuesday, the 22nd, and uh, just to determine uh, treatment, uh, treatment plan going forward. And so we're uh, very thankful for the healing uh, that has taken place already, and so we'll see what comes next uh, for her. And uh, as, we, as we pray together, as we center ourselves on Jesus, isn't it, isn't it good to know that there is a means by which we can come together, even in a world of different opinions? Anybody, anybody thankful for that? And uh, thankful for the way in which God has provided that. And I'm very thankful for, for all of you. Uh, because, you know, in, the, in this room, we all share the same opinion about what's going on about, around us, right? No, we don't. But when we come here, we have learned and we are continuing to learn what it means to unite in Jesus and look to him for our hope. A really cool reminder, even amid the sadness that I feel, some of you may not know that Ottawa is my hometown, and I worked for many years in downtown Ottawa, so to see what happens down there, it's sad uh, to me on a lot of different levels. And I won't go into all of that. But one of, the things that is, uh, one of the things that's important for us to be reminded of is that on the parliament buildings, on the arch of the center block, it's written these words from Psalm 72 and verse 8. It says, and they have it written in the King James Version, he will have dominion from sea to sea. That comes from Psalm 72, verse 8. And so that is where we need to continue to pray for our nation and the people within it. Now, how many people, and I mentioned this this morning in my 915 window, how many people know who's to blame? How many people are willing to say they know who's to blame? Excellent. You all do have an opinion. That's great. Here's the thing. Jesus has 
the response for us. We need to be centered in him. And God reminds us that over and over and over again. When we deviate from that, it changes the way we treat people. It changes the way we listen to opinions that are different than ours. And that needs to stop. And uh, that's kind of the sadness that I feel for our country. So let me read the verses that come before Psalm 72. And then I'll read Psalm 72, verse 8. Endow the king with justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. May he judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones with justice. May the mountains bring prosperity to the people, the hills the fruit of righteousness. May he defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy. May he crush the oppressor. May he endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon, through all generations. May he be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. In his days, may the righteous flourish and prosperity abound till the moon is no more. And then it says, may he rule or may he have dominion from sea to sea. Let's pray together. So, Father, as we uh, gather together today as a, a community, uh, as a as a group of people, uh, different, from different ages, different stages of life, and different perspectives, we come acknowledging our desire to uh, understand what it means to be united in Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Father, for your favor over us in this regard, to be able to uh, walk through the circumstances of our days, demonstrating genuine concern and love for those, even those who might share different opinions than us. And so forgive us when we have failed in that regard. Father, would you use us to fulfill these words that you have ascribed long ago and that were put in place so many years ago as a theme for our nation? May indeed, Father, you rule. May you have dominion. May your sovereignty be felt from sea to sea to sea. Forgive us for taking our eyes off of that. But Father, we ask that you would bring peace and healing to our nation. You would grant wisdom and discernment and understanding to those in places of authority. And Father, that you would grant a deep, a deep sense of humility toward us as citizens, towards each other. That the love of Christ may be made known. And that men and women and boys and girls would be drawn not towards political stances, but towards our King. And so, God, would you uh, be at work in us in that? And in the things, the circumstances of our own lives, we lay them out before you and know, God, that those are significant to you. And so here are our cries for our lives. And as we do, we lift up Cheryl and the Atidi family as they await news of next steps. And we ask, God, that you would go before them, that you would prepare the way. And we thank you for the strength that you have given in recovery already the help that you have provided around. And we pray, Father, that you would ready them for what comes next as well. And so we commit ourselves to you, to your purposes, to be people, ambassadors, who represent you in the fullness of grace and truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Kid Jam, thanks, Pat. He whispers that every Sunday. And today, I'm going to listen. So we're going to send Kid Jam uh, out. Uh, this is Sirtsma, and then uh, kids age 2 to grade 6, if you can make your way out. And then we'll come and get you at some point. All right. Thanks, Pat. Awesome. And for the rest of us, we're actually going to learn a new song this morning. Um, perhaps you've heard it. It's called Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me. And uh, in this song, the title and, uh, and the verses in it seem to me rooted in, uh, in the letter to the Galatians when Paul writes to them, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. 
And what you'll notice as we sing through this song is in the middle of each of the verses, there's, there's a point in which, almost an anchor point in the verse, in which it says, to this I hold. And so let me encourage you, as we learn and sing through this song together, let me encourage you to, to just listen to the verses, sing through the verses, but more importantly, pray to Jesus through the verses. And when we get to that point of to this I hold, ask yourself if that hope, that hope that you, that you feel in Jesus is responsive in the way in which this song is speaking to us. Um, there's a lot of great biblical truth in this song. So let's stand together as we sing through this. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to Him. Oh, how strange. All is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, the Savior, He will stay. I labor on. In weakness and rejoicing, for in my need his power is displayed. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend me. Through the deepest valley he will lead. Oh, the night has been won, and I shall. Overcome yet not I, but through Christ in me. No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon and he was raised to overthrow the grave to this i hold my sin has been defeated jesus now and ever is my plea oh the chains are released i can see said that he will bring me home 
And day by day, I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne. To this we hold, our hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Amen. You can be seated. reminder it's a great reminder of everything for me right it's it's not it's not me but how am i allowing christ to move me to influence the way i think the way i act and those those things like that uh, and lead me along uh, the path of life it's huge great great reminder thanks to pat and Brittany for leading us this morning. And thanks, too, for Pat uh, and uh, bringing the, the word last week. Uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate that and learning hope in the storm. And if you uh, didn't get a chance to listen uh, or watch, then you can still do both uh, on our, uh, so our uh, media channels as well. Uh, this morning, I want to invite you to turn, have open uh, 1 Peter chapter 4 as we continue this series, uh, Growing Together. And we'll refer there uh, in a moment, but let's, let's just pause and uh, ask God to teach us. So Father, here, uh, here we are on another Sunday morning, uh, bright and beautiful as, uh, as winter unfolds into spring, and um, we come together with great hope, not in the changing of seasons, but in the one through whom change is possible. And so we thank you that Jesus is the author of our faith, that he is the creator of our lives and the world in which we live, and he is the one through whom it is sustained. And we thank you that in him, your truth comes alive. And so would you teach us this morning what it means to continue to grow together in this shared faith that we have, through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Well, if you were to come to my home and uh, ask me to show you my workshop, you know, you know the place, right, where all real guys keep their hammers and saws and drills and screwdrivers and socket sets? You can picture it, right? The tables, the multi drawer, tool chest, the shelves, the wall racks where all those kinds of things get organized. You know, I love real guys. In fact, I am friends with very many real guys, but I am not that real guy. I've got a really good shovel. I've got a dependable hammer. I've got a really sweet sledgehammer that I definitely know how to use and a screwdriver with a gajillion exchangeable uh, tips. I've got a few other little things as well, but those have seen me through life pretty good. And so if you're working on a building project of some kind, you're looking for somebody with the right tools, then I'm not your guy. The right tools used by the right person for the right purpose in the right manner is always a thing of beauty to watch. And that's true when it comes to construction or mechanical repair or artistic ability or athletic ability. When you see someone equipped with the right tools, using them in a purposeful manner, it's actually quite captivating. Oftentimes, those individuals take time to learn not only about their own skill development, they also learn how to get the most out of the tools or the equipment that they have at their disposal. And it's not, it's not always the most talented person who wins. It's often the one who can combine talent with purpose and perseverance in pursuit of a goal. That's the one who generally rises to the top. And for the best of the best, they all make it appear a little more 
relaxed. It seems almost simple. It's like the game or the elements around them slow down. You see, the right tools with the right purpose used in the right manner yield excellent results. If you don't, if you don't trust me on that one, go ahead and try replicating Winter Olympic events uh, in your own backyard, and then come and, come and talk to me. At the SCMC, our vision is to partner with God in developing genuine, fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. And part of fulfilling that desire, that vision, we, is, we desire to love seekers, inviting them to come and see Christ. We desire to build believers, encouraging them to grow in Christ. And we unpack these first two statements at the beginning of this month. And each message also is available uh, in audio and video formats. This week, we want to turn our attention to a third statement, that at the SEMC, we desire to equip workers, releasing them to serve Christ. It's worth repeating that our hope is that some of you will be re-energized in your commitment to live out your faith in Jesus in an everyday cycles. It will also be that some will be challenged to take another step of obedience or to be led in confession of sin, allowing the Spirit of God to continue to work within you. Still others may say, hey, I'd really like to formally identify with the SEMC as an active member. Our vision and our strategy are summed up by this phrase, partnering with God and serving our community. They're also simplified with one simple word, spring. Serve, pray, respond in grace. At the SEMC, it's always spring. Who can't wait for spring, right? Spring, the season which many of us hope comes sooner than later, whatever the groundhog might say. Spring is a time of growth and emergence. It's a season of release from the doldrums of winter. It's a season of change, of opportunity, of discovery. And for those of us who have made a commitment to follow Jesus as their Savior, You are invited into that kind of experience. Jesus wants to equip you to serve him and his purposes. He wants to release you to serve the people that he loves with the right purpose and with perseverance. And in order to do that, he is willing to give you the right tools. In 1 Peter chapter 4, starting in verse 7, we read the following. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober-minded so that you may pray. Now, if this were an Olympic competition, then Peter would be saying it's the home stretch. It's the last run. It's the final turn. It's the last lap. It's the last end, the last period, the last shift. It's crunch time. And so if you want to navigate this well, here's some key tips for you to finish well. And we've certainly been reminded in many ways, internationally and now nationally, that the world is in need of healing. It's a need of wholeness. It's a need of peace. We need the fulfillment of the promises of God that are inaugurated by the return of Jesus. And if you are unmoved or unconcerned about the circumstances in which we live globally and nationally, ethically and relationally, then this message will be of little use to you. These words from Peter are timely for us. That is, for those who want to serve Christ according to his purposes, with his tools, and with his perseverance. And it starts with sticking with the plan. Just as an apprentice learns a trade from a mentor, just as an athlete executes the strategy of a coach, we also, as followers of Jesus, must be in constant communication with our Heavenly Father. Peter says it this way, be alert, be sober-minded so that you can pray. We need to be free from distraction, clear thinking, so that we can effectively listen to and communicate with our Heavenly Father on a regular basis because things are going to get tougher as the time for Jesus' return draws closer. It's no surprise to him. Our capacity to be regularly attuned to his word and our humility to talk to him about anything that needs clarification or confession 
are the keys to handling the right tools in the right way with the right purpose. A lack of communication with our Heavenly Father, a distracted mind, unclear thinking means that we will misuse having the right tools even. So what are those tools? That's a great question. Thanks for asking. Let's look. If you've grown up and been part of a, a church family for a number of years, often there's an emphasis on using the right words. There can often be training on what we call evangeliz evangelism, that is learning how to share the truth of God with others, using specific verses from the Bible and having a series of good words to cycle through. There can also be an emphasis on sharing your testimony, your, your putting into words your relationship with Jesus, so that then you can be effective in sharing that with others. We can, learn, we can also learn how to use apologetics to defend what we believe, or we can learn uh, theology to deepen our ability to verbalize the truths that we can believe. There can be a significant emphasis on the use of words as, as it comes from Christian culture. So then it should follow that being rightly equipped with words should be right at the top of the tool checklist, right? Right? So let's just check that out and see. Do you have your Bible still open? See if we can distinguish an order or a priority here, starting in verse 8. Above all. Oh, above all. So whatever Peter is about to write should be of primary importance for us in a world where confusion reigns, right? This is, this is the top. Above all. Whatever comes next is significant for us to remember. Let's continue on. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. So of first importance is love, deep love, demonstrated toward others. That's the tool of first importance. And notice why it's important. You see, we live in a world where sin is growing in great significance. Now, let me say this. In our current times, as I've previously mentioned, it saddens me when we see people being drawn into childish antics of pointing out blame and calling each other names. It's so dizzying in these times where the truth of our circumstances are getting buried between a growing heap of isolated stories with political media and social media spin. As followers of Jesus, as we look with anticipation for the return of Jesus, even in a world of confusion and, it seems, rampant sin, the first tool that we pick up, our first response needs to be love, deep love, sacrificial love. We serve Christ, demonstrating that we are his workers by our commitment to love others deeply even in a world that seems to be moving further and further away from God's standard of goodness and holiness. So that's one tool in the toolkit. The next one, the next tool, it must be words, right? So let's check that out. Verse, verse 9. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. So being a people who are in com continual communication with God, who demonstrate love deeply, equipped workers for Christ, then we ought to be welcoming to others. To, off to offer hospitality is not to ask us to host dinner parties and that kind of a thing. It's really speaking about being welcoming to others into our lives, particularly, get this, others who are different than you. If love that is inspired from the life and example of Jesus is a central, most significant factor, then our capacity to be open to welcoming others into our lives ought to flow out of that. Our hospitality towards those who are different than us, whether it's by age or race or political, political affiliation, va vaccine stance or protest perspective or anything else, should be that which demonstrates love and moves towards peace. Hospitality is the reconciliation work of Jesus in everyday practice. 
You see, we are culturally being shaped continually to close others out, to create and increase division. The message, however, all the way through the Bible is welcoming others in, cheerfully, without grumbling. Okay. So, love deeply, even in a confusion of a sin-influenced world. Welcome others, even if they are different than us. Now, now it must be time for words, right? Let's look at verse 10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So over the last four weeks, and for a couple more to come, I've had the privilege of learning with a diverse group of others from the SEMC family. We're going through a book called the, A Church Called Tov. It's a book that I referenced a few times last year. Tov is the Hebrew word for God's goodness or his grace. In fact, this, this past week, we drilled down a little deeper on the idea of grace. And it was insightful and humbling to me, at least, to hear of the many different people and circumstances that God used in each of our lives to turn our hearts towards him. It was amazing that each one of us could remember distinctly when they first understood about God's grace towards them. And as, as, a, as we continued to have this discussion, how there were times in our lives where we might have felt distant from God or we, were, we knew we were living in ways contrary to his will, and God used a circumstance or someone to remind us of his grace. God is full of grace, all sufficient in his grace, and his desire is to see people, men and women, boys and girls, understand what it means to be loved by him. You see, you cannot extinguish the grace of God. It is abundant. It is inexhaustible. His love is demonstrated through his grace, which we often call amazing. And many of us understand this, but in principle. We know that our lives have been changed, altered, and transformed, redirected because of God's grace. Which means then that we should be all the more ready to demonstrate God, that same grace to others through humble acts of service, service towards them. A simple act of grace inspired by a deep love for others can be used of God to turn someone's life toward Jesus. And in a sin-influenced world that seems desperate, ready for the return of our king, shouldn't we then be all the more intentional in serving others with grace? When you place your faith in Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God comes into your life and begins to help you grow as a believer and teaches you how to use his tools, the tools of his character for his praise and glory. One of the key means by which this is accomplished is through spiritual gifts. These are different than natural talents or personal strengths. Learning to function according to your gifts and then serve others, even those who are different than you, with deep love is where true freedom is found. You see, there is no limit to how deep you can demonstrate love. There is no end to God's supply of grace. And in a community and a nation that is crying out for freedom, God invites us to experience that and then share it with others around us. Later this spring, we'll look to help people identify their spiritual gifts because some have not ever done that. And then we'll help them be released to use them. But more on that at another time. Now notice that all of this comes after the high priority of love and the emphasis on opening up our lives to others and the reminder of serving others with grace. It is after this that we are then encouraged to reach for the words in the toolbox of discipleship. You see, words without 
the virtues and characteristics of Jesus sound like a clanging gong. They are noise that push people away and cause division. Those are words that the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13. Our words, verbal, written, or digital, prayerfully, carefully, thoughtfully, lovingly, generously used, become the right tool empowered by God to ignite praise and glory to him. If approached with a humility of spirit, we won't need to worry as much about what to say because the message will already be welcomed through the, your demonstration of your life towards another. Make no mistake, this is a consistent heart of God toward the world, particularly in a world of people where people People can often feel alone, oppressed, abandoned, used, and abused. In Exodus chapter 3, when God is speaking to Moses about the Israelites, he says that he hears their pain, he, hears their, he feels their pain, he hears their crying, and he is moved with compassion and enters into their circumstances. And he equips Moses to serve his kingdom purposes, and he has no concern for the lack of speaking ability that Moses tries to throw up as an excuse. Additionally, at the end of Matthew chapter 9, in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 9, we read the example of Jesus. He's with a group of people like us, disciples, he calls them. They have watched him bring healing to many people. They have seen and heard him point people toward the good news of the kingdom. You know, recognizing good news can only happen when people first become aware of the bad news, of the brokenness of the relationship that exists with the world and within the world, or in our relationships, or even how we view ourselves. Into that brokenness, into that bad news comes the way of Jesus, which then is good news, or as we commonly say, the gospel. And then it's as though if you look into the eyes of Jesus, his eyes are looking out. And they're looking up. And they're looking around. People. Crowds and crowds of people. Harassed and helpless they are. Wearied by the circumstances of life and almost afraid to make a choice in case it's not the best choice or the right choice. And we read that he is moved with compassion. And when we read that Jesus has compassion, it's a reflection of his hurt, his woundedness over the consequences of of a sin-influenced world upon the people who are all made in his image and of whom he deeply loves. That feeling of compassion is often described for us like a, a knot in our stomachs that compels him to enter into the pain of others. And then he speaks. And then he speaks. And he says... The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. He says, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest to have more churches with better church services. He says, ask the Lord of the harvest to provide more advertising, more space, more open doors, more buildings for people who may want to come in at some point in time and act the same way that I'm comfortable acting. No. He says, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into the harvest field. You see, he is the Lord of the harvest, and he wants to equip workers who will go and who will serve with love and hospitality and the grace that he offers. Often when people come to the SEMC from other places, they come because they like the idea of what we are doing. 
if they stick around long enough, they find that we actually take it seriously. And if you were to ask, how can I serve as part of the SEMC? Undoubtedly, there are some roles that we could use some help with around here within these walls. That's for sure. However, our primary emphasis has been first to consider loving those deeply around you. Right where you are. Your family. Your neighborhood. Your community. Join a community organization. Learn to open yourselves up to others who are different than you. Allowing them to learn from the life of Jesus in you. And allowing the life of Jesus in you to impact their lives. And then, as you are aware of their needs in their lives, serve them with grace. You see, equipping workers, releasing them to serve Christ, that's what this is about. Released from the confines of insular, self-serving Christian culture. Released into the inextinguishable reservoir, the deep well where love and grace are found. Released to come alongside the helpless and the harassed among us. Released to feed the hungry. Released to give water to the thirsty. Released to give clothes to the needy. Released to welcome the stranger. Released to care for the sick and to visit the isolated. To be released is to experience a transformational freedom that our current culture craves and is not dependent on a political agenda or mandate. To be released to serve Christ is to persevere, to finish well, to receive the great rewards of the eternal kingdom of God. Equipping workers with the right tool, used for the right purposes, used in the right manner, with a spirit of perseverance. That's what we, what we desire to be about as the SEMC as we partner with God, and as we serve our community. Let's pray together. Father, as we uh, stand with the disciples, and we watch you, watch the world around you, you see the people in the harvest field. And you ache for them. Helpless and harassed. Fearful and afraid. And you simply ask us to use the tools that you give us to love them, to welcome them, and to serve them. May your will be done in our lives just as you lived it out for us. Amen. Let me invite you to stand with us as we sing a song to close out our service. Son of 
God and man, you are high and lifted up, and all the world will praise your great God and man, you are high and lifted up, and all the world will praise your great name, Jesus, worthy is the Lamb that was slain for us, the Son of God and man. Thanks so much. That song is just awesome and completely fitting uh, for, for today. Appreciate that. The name of Jesus changes everything. May the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, may he himself restore you and make you strong. May he make you firm and steadfast. To him be power forever and ever. And all God's people said, amen. Amen, I heard that. Thanks for joining us today. Keep well, wash your hands, and let's go make a kingdom difference.